All right, guys, Matt with Thrive Off Grid. Okay, so today I want to go over the uh, the Fusion module and sort of explain its capabilities. Um, you know, it's more than uh, just a, uh, a filter. Um, we call it the Fusion because it is uh, basically a networking module to network multiple machines together. So basically you're fusing uh, multiple machines together into one and so I have it here um, on, at, set up as an RTR and then also as a standalone networking module so this unit here can be set up exactly like that one over there it, this just bolts on to the, the gas fire so um, it is designed to be integrated directly onto the unit or it can be set up on a stand, and I'll go over that here in a second. Um, so when you order uh, any gas fire in RTR format, including the uh, DFX S1, um, that is currently being redesigned, and it will also share the new version of the Fusion. So all gas fires in RTR format will come with the Fusion uh, directly integrated as you see here. So this is the basic format for an RTR gas fire. Okay, so, but even in this configuration, you still have the networking port. So you can add um, two additional gas fire modules to this Fusion. So what you should understand is when you buy an RTR, what you're paying for is the Fusion, your hose attachment kit, uh, the, the ammo box fine filter, your mixer valve, and all the stuff that goes with uh, adapting a generator. Um, we, we try to build it as uh, art ready to run as we possibly can. And uh, we pretty, as long as you're running, you know, the, the, the run of the mill off the shelf generators, um, you'll be able to adapt. Um, you won't have to buy anything, you'll, it'll be ready to go. Okay, now. If you were to buy a module, so this is what a gas fire module looks like. It doesn't have the fusion bolted on, and that is it. That's what you get is the, just a gas fire module. There's no startup blower. There's no ammo box filter. There's no hose attachment kit. None of that stuff. However, when you buy, because if you were to buy a gas fire module, you're already going to have all that stuff, right? Because you have an RTR. So you already have the hose hose kit, the ammo box, and everything that came with this unit. Now what it what the module does come with is it does come with a stand and it comes with the valve accessory um, to to bolt the RTR or the, the module itself up. So it's not gonna come with three of them. It's only gonna come per module is, um, you'll get the uh, the the adapters. Okay, so now when you separate the fusion from the uh, gas fire module, this port is actually built into the, the pickup tube. And I'll show you that. This is one of the, the pickup tubes over here on the 2023 model. So as you can see, it's already got a port adapter already built into it. And I'll show you what that looks like here from the inside. So as you can see, that's the pickup tube. And then you see the the uh, port on top, that's your clean out port. So you uh, remove the access cover right here and uh, you'll have access to that to clean that tube out if you ever needed to. Okay, so why would you want to set it up this way? All right, now if you want to be able to refuel on the fly without stalling the engine, then you'll want to set it up as a standalone so that you could add the, the cutoff valves. If you have one gas fire in the mix without a cutoff valve, then you can't refuel on the fly. Yes, you'll be able to re refuel the the two add-on units, but because your RTR isn't going to have a, a cutoff valve in between the, 
the gas fire module and the fusion, there's no way to cut off, cut it off so that when you open the hopper lid and you get that air blast in there, that's going to change things. And basically the engine will stall. So that is why you'd want to separate so that you have a cutoff valve for all, all units that are being networked. So basically, if you're going to refuel on the fly, you just cut off the valve. The other one or other two, if you had the, the third one, will be running the generator while this one's taken offline. Now you can open the hopper, no air blast. You can refuel, it takes seconds. And then in the time that it takes you to refuel, this isn't gonna go out. It'll, it'll be right back to producing gas. So what you do is you just open this back up. Now that one's back online. Proceed to the next one, do the same thing, refuel it, bring it back online then do the, the final one, and then you'll be refueled for all three. Now, um, if two or three um, gas fires is enough runtime, then you may not want to do this setup because then um, I guess the con of this is, you know, you don't have one unit that you could just take away and run maybe another, another application. Maybe running multiple applications is more important than refueling on the fly then you probably want to keep it as an RTR because then you can just unplug the units and then roll this one away over to your, your other application and you could run that application. All right. So this is the configuration this way. All right. So this is a DFX S2. That's a DFX S3. There's nothing stopping you from taking a two and not working it with the three if you wanted to. All right, so basically all I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna remove the, the dust cover. Now, if you wanted to run without this unit, that's how you'd, you'd run this. You put the put the cap on and then that seals, seals that port off. But now that port's open, so you're just going to need a networking tube or a networking hose. All right, so now they're attached. You know, if you wanted to put them all in line or put them, set them up a tripod, you could do it that way. Probably run a shorter hose if you wanted to. But oh yeah, yeah, we will supply uh the hose um adapter as well. <clears throat> so yeah, that's just the, the difference, you know. So when you buy a module, you know, you don't get the, the fusion. You have to buy an RTR to get the fusion. But if you tell us we can we can uh uh build it so that um that it's set up pre-existing for for uh for a standalone setup if you want that otherwise uh by default we always uh on an rtr we always install the the fusion so um i hope that uh clarifies that i hope it's not too confusing but yeah i mean that's this is a better way to do this rather than build a giant hopper for one you need to be able to service the gas fire so you can't just just add add a larger hopper. Um, another thing too is uh, a gas fire will produce gas that will migrate into the hopper that is flammable. So if you read our warning, warning gas inside hopper can't ignite, keep face body away. And the reason that's there is that if this has been running and you shut the engine off and you immediately open this and hey how much fuel is in there poof your your eyebrows will be uh gone <laughs> so that's why that's there if you open the lid you know keep your keep your face and body away and then just kind of step back give it about 10 20 seconds because sometimes there's a delay and then uh sometimes you'll get a, a flashback and it's it's not it's really not that big of a deal a lot of gas fires do that. Pretty much all of them do that. 
And another thing, um, it's not such a problem with charcoal, but a wood gasifier, the hopper volume is part of the design. You can't change that. The, the, the gasifier can only process uh, so much moisture. Um, and if you have a, an excessively large hopper, the hopper is actually part of the process. That, that is the drying zone. And if you have too much fuel drying at launch, you're gonna to produce too much moisture and then it's gonna overwhelm the reactor and basically crash the processes and that thing's just gonna spew tar out and destroy anything, any engine that's attached to. So yeah, um, you don't wanna, you, you can't, it's not that simple. That's why if you look at our older videos, all of our machines were, were auger fed. And that was uh, to keep the, the actual hopper load linear. And um, that worked really well because uh, even with like a, a gravity fed hopper, the, the hopper level is always gonna be changing where that was pretty static. The hopper level was always maintained. And you know, the better that you can maintain all the processes, the better, the better gas and more consistent machine will run. So no, you can't just add another hopper, all right? Now, with this setup, you can, you know, for every gas fire that you're adding, you're adding, uh, you're doubling your, your capacity. So a hopper, as big as another gas fire sitting on top of that, you know, it's still going to cost just as much to build a module. You know, the only extra cost is, our, is the water tank and the jet system. And then, of course, uh, the wheels and handle bracket. But, you know, that's, you know that's, those are pretty minor things. Um we would still have to have uh, a way, a means to integrate that larger hopper onto existing existing products. So that's going to complicate things. That'll add some cost. That's not going to be easy to do because this has to be sealed. It cannot leak. And then the uh, the other thing is um, all you're doing doing is adding fuel capacity. Where where this every gas fire you're you're adding, not only are you adding uh, hopper capacity, but you're also increasing the application that application size that the machine can run. So the DFX S3, we now have them rated up to 900 cc's as we as I've tested now with uh, the two generators. So for every one of these, it's almost a thousand uh, a one liter engine. So three of them together should be able to run a three liter, no problem. And then if you're running at, you know, 1800 RPM, then you might actually even be able to go to, go to like a five liter. And uh, if you need more runtime, then then you can always, you know, you you can always upgrade to the to the S4, which um, these are actually the, the first protos we built. I think eight of these now. And uh, these aren't production machines. These are uh, um, pre-production prototypes. The... The production DFX S4 um, is going to be slightly taller. It's still going to, have to be the same footprint as those, but in order to service those, um, I had to chop off about uh, four to six inches. So the top of this is going to be down here. And the reason is you need to be able to service uh, down to the grate. You need to be able to clean the machine out. Um, and you don't want to be laying it down. So you need to be able to reach down all the way down to the bottom to service the unit. Okay, well, um, again, I hope that uh, explains uh, how, the, how the Fusion is, uh, is designed and how um, it can be used. So, you know, if you have any questions, you know, feel, feel free to contact us. Um, but just so you know, you know, when you buy a, a gas fire, you're not stuck with just just a gas fire that's limited to a say a 500 cc engine you know you could always add on the modules and you can do so for less cost than a full rtr because all you're buying is the module and then you can increase your application size or or, or reduce it or do whatever you want so these our machines are pretty uh pretty versatile no other machine that i know of can do can be set up that way on, on the current market all right, guys, so uh, anyways, uh, till next time, uh, thanks for watching.